Hello and welcome to the new Lua tutorial. Today's topic is sound and music. There are many new options for music and sound in Smith X2 and I want to show you how to uh, make looping music with proper loop points, how to use multiple cost custom music tracks in a level and how to replace the sound effects and music files for a level or an entire episode. So let's get started by taking this long song, which is currently a 30 minute extended music file, and let's open that with Audacity, which is a free music. As it seems, Audacity has shut down my microphone, so for the rest of the episode you will enjoy my company from beyond the recording. As uh, the loading has finished, we can immediately tell that there are some definitive repeats in the audio structure. And if we zoom in further, we can make out some more distinct ones. For example, right here you can see that this segment is exactly the same as the segment that comes after it. So we already know that everything that comes after it is just a repeat repetition. So we can just delete that. This will be easier to figure out on some audio files than on others but on this one it was pretty easy to figure out. Now that we have this little segment, we can uh, try to find the loop point. That was like the start of what could potentially be a loop, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to click through and see if I can find different similar points. As you can see, that point is the exact same as the one from before, so we already know that everything to the right of this one is also just a duplicate. So what we can do next is we can find something close to zero on the wavelength and move it all the way over there, drag it into a selection, and go back to the first instance where we found it and try to find the same spot. So now what we can do is we can play that back. And it fits perfectly. What I did actually was I uh, held shift in order to make the looping music uh, jump back to the start of the selection. So what you want next is the bottom to say samples, because samples is the unit of measurement we will need in just a minute. So I'm back in the folder here and we're going to export the file now. We can use the quality setting of zero, which will be barely noticeable to not at all the first time you do it, but you don't want to do it like multiple times in a row. It basically gives you a smaller file size for pretty much the same quality on an AUG file. So when we hit save, we are presented with the metadata and we can manipulate the metadata in order to get our loop points to work correctly. We want to use the loop start um, loop start metadata for the first one and we want to use a loop end metadata for the second one and then we want to insert the samples which we can see below there are actually two ways to do this one is with loop end and one is with loop length I prefer the loop end variety but uh, if you want uh, your preferences what you would want to choose. So now we have the longsong.org and longsong.mp3. As you can see, this one is like 400 megabytes, but this one is 40, uh, 400 kilobytes, while the other one is 41 megabytes, which is a little bit bigger. So we can delete that so that our file size is not as big. And now if we go to this uh, menu, we can see all of our music files neatly lined up. If we start playing that... We can immediately hear that it works exactly like you would expect custom music in Smabex to work. Now that's fine and all, but what if we want multiple custom music tracks to play in the same level? There are several ways in order to accomplish this. Uh, one is with Lua and one is without, but first I'm going to go over the ways that require Lua and I'm gonna swerve back around to the ones that don't afterwards. If we create a function on event we can run our own Lua code to change the music to our custom in Lua defined music. So when we ha have the event running, we can call audio music open in order to open the music file that we want. Inside we have to specify the file path to the music, which is of course as always rooted in the level folder, which in our case is the test boss song.org, which we can just paste in here and then uh, we have that. 
but however, as it stands, it doesn't really do much because it's loaded but not playing. So what we need to do is we also need to call audio.music play. So now when we create something to trigger our play boss music event, which is on the right hand side and not really doing anything. For example, using this off block, we can test the level. And as you can see, it just kind of restarted the song from before, which is not the intended thing. I recall putting a different song into Music Open. The reason for this is that currently the environment for music in Smabex and the one in Lua are completely separate. So we're trying to like play music without having full control over the music. This can be easily fixed with a single line of Lua, which is uh, which is called audio.cstream. Inside the parentheses you specify the section in which, in which you want to seize the stream. Uh, for our purposes we want to use minus one for all sections. And as you can hear, now it plays the boss music that I had specified, which is a neat little Kirby boss tune. In this way we can have multiple custom music tracks per section, and there are actually even more things that you can do with the audio uh, manipulation in Lua. So I'm going to make an ELSIF for an event name in which we want to pause the music. And inside we can call something for example audio.musicpause. You can find all of this in the documentation which I have linked below. And we can create a pause event which is triggered by the play boss music event after a short amount of time. And if we now play the level again. It stopped abruptly after exactly two seconds, just like you would expect from the events being called. We can also stop the music indefinitely uh, with music stop, or we can make music stop fade out, which uh, takes an amount of milliseconds for its overload. Uh, for example, of course, 1000 millisecond being one second. Another thing we can do is we can go into the music play and change it to music play fade in. And now our uh, music track, which we spent so much time setting up, is more akin to a very faint sound effect that just sounds very ominous at the start. So that's the uh, music manipulation that you can do. You can also do various other things like uh, adjusting the volume of the music, but I don't want to go into that right here for the purposes of time. Let's move on to sounds. The way to manipulate sounds in Lua is using the sound override class, which is uh, used by using audio.sounds with an ID and specifying a file name. In order to find out which ID your sound has, you want to go to the templates folder, which we have seen previously, and going into sounds.ini, you can see all the IDs of sound effects as well as uh, where they are defined to. For example, if we wanted to change the jump sound, we would just change the sound of ID 1, and then we would still have to specify the name using just the file name. For example, the test jump sfx.wave. <laughs> And I've made a mistake here, where I specified mist.resolve file, which searches in different directories, but in actuality you need to specify sfx, audio.sfx open, which will uh, load the sound effect into the sound stream for further reuse. And as you can hear, there's our jump sound effect, fresh and new, and that's the way to access it through Lua. As you have seen with sounds.ini though, you already have like a file in which all sound effects are defined and you can actually use a local copy of this just like a custom graphic in order to change your sound effects on a per level or per episode basis without writing a line of Lua. You just go into the file definition and change it to the file name of the audio file. And if I don't have any Lua anymore, as you can see, it creates the same effect regardless. Because now it's replaced through sounds.ini and it's no longer requiring any Lua code. We can go into 
the templates folder again and you might have already seen the music.ini which is formatted exactly the same just for music. Here we can change music uh, in vanilla SMAPX to any defined music by ourselves. We can change the file path exactly like we did with the sound effect just this time for music in order to replace one of the vanilla sound effects with one of our custom music tracks. Then we don't need to play the music through Lua, for example. We can use the event tab in order to switch the music from our first song to the what is replaced to the Super Mario 64 desert theme. So then if we test... Now our event is uh, calling the previously Super Mario 64 desert theme, which is now our Kirby boss theme creating an alternate solution in order to play your music in your level or episode files. Going back into the code, there are a few more things which I want to address regarding sound effects, because right now, so far, we have only touched upon sound effects which um, replace sound effects that are there in vanilla. However, you can use the function sfx.play in numerous ways in order to play your own sound effects. The first thing it can do is it can use sound IDs to play internal sound effects whenever you need them. For example, you can do uh, you can play the swamp sound effect when the player runs or whatnot. You can also specify a file path just like before as the first argument, and it will then play that sound effect. We still want to like wrap it into on start, for example, in order to actually hear it at the start of the game, though. So as you can hear, there was our jump sound effect without us having the need to actually jump. There's more stuff you can do with uh, sfx.play. The simple second argument is the volume setting, which is between 0 and 1, so if we lower it to 0 0.2, it was a little bit more quiet, and now if we lower it to 0, 0.0 or just 0. You can uh, set the volume, but you can also set the amount of loops. So there I've set it to 2, and you could it here 2 times, but if you set it to 0, it just starts looping indefinitely, and even when the program is closed, so do watch out for that. The fourth argument, and final one, if you do not use named arguments, is the minimum delay between plays. By default, this value is 4, so it needs 4 frames before uh, two sfx.plays can uh, call the same sound effect. I'm going to change this to Unticky real quick so that we can demonstrate this. If we change it to 16, for example, and change our loops back to 2 so that it like loops twice, it's called every frame, but can only be repeated every 16 frames. And then test. This gives us a similar experience to what we had before, but only to like compare it. I'm going to show you one frame. Nobody wants to hear that. Please put your uh, delays into the function. Alright, there is one more function which I want to touch on. I will not touch on the named arguments for sfx.play because of uh, the fact that the handbook also has them. If you want to check them out, please take a look at the handbook and uh, you can see what is available to you there. sfx.create will always use named arguments. You will need to specify the sound which you want to play, which you can also again do by specifying the file name. So I'm going to copy this over and paste it in here. You can then also specify the X and Y coordinate in which the sound originates. For example, I'm going to put in the bottom left corner of the first screen with uh, the X and Y coordinates minus 200,000. There's a little bit of a bug in there right now where I put a minus instead of an equal symbol. And another thing I forgot is I forgot to put down the falloff radius. You need to specify a falloff radius in order to tell the program 
how far away you need to move before the sound effect stops playing entirely. For example, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put like 400 so that you need to pull, move away half a screen in order for the sound to disappear. You can hear it in your left ear right now, and if I move further to the right, well, it slowly gets silent. So, I hope you learned something today, and that's all I wanted to touch on, and I'll see you next time.